that we have completed the theory on moments, the principle of moments, equilibrium, the center of mass, stability, let us start practicing some examination style questions. If you had some theory on the doubts, I hope when we go through this, this video, when, when we go through the, the examination style questions, all your doubts will be clarified. So let us start with the practical application of what we have learnt in the videos, in the theory so far. So let us start with question number one. The figure here shows a top view of a tourist vehicle in a game park and two elephants pushing against the vehicle. The two forces indicated are at right angle to each other. There are two forces indicated, they are at right angle. So what is happening? There is a tourist vehicle, maybe there is an attack by the jungle animals in the safari looks like it's a safari or something right the elephants have attacked the vehicle and they are pushing on to the vehicle the two forces that are applied they are at 90 degrees can you identify the forces first things identify the forces the forces that you can see present here are four what is the unit? Kilo unit, kilo newtons and 6 kilo newtons. Complete the question. In the space below, draw a scale vector diagram to determine the magnitude of the resultant force. So what do you have to do here? You have to find the resultant force. Label the two forces applied and the resultant. So the question is clearly telling you what all you need to do to gain all the three marks you have. Do not forget to put the label. You have to not to forget to put the scale, right? And clearly state the scale you use. So they are clearly telling, they are clearly instructing what all things you need to be careful about when you are attempting the question. So we are going to use, as you all understand, the parallelogram rule, right? Because the forces are not in the same straight line. If you have not gone through the theory on parallelogram rule, please go through it. We have a video on that as well. So what are the two forces? Let me give you a rough sketch of how you'll start working on this. If you want, you can pause the video here. You can attempt the whole question, play the video again and see and tally your working, tally your answers. So one of the forces is four kilo newtons let me expand 4000 newtons the other force is 6000 newtons so clearly it makes sense to take a scale of 1 centimeter is equal to 1000 newtons this scales look quite good or you can take any other feasible scale right looks quite a good scale what do you have to do you have to draw the two forces two lines one could be 6 cm long, which represents the 6000 newtons. It has to be 6 cm long. Other force, which is 4000 newtons. How long would it be? It would be 4 cm long. With an angle of 90 degrees between them, if you read the question carefully, that the, the question tells you, that the two forces are at right angle. What you have to do? You have to complete this parallelogram. The parallelogram in this case is your, is your rectangle. What is the resultant? The question tells you to clearly indicate the resultant. So that's your resultant. The diagonal is your resultant. Do not forget the arrows. Why? Because it is a force. Force is a vector, vector should have an arrow, right? So this should give you your answer. Let me tell you what the answer should be here. It should be, your answer should be, a correct answer here would be something between 7.0 to 7.4 kilo newtons. So if your answer is coming in, in this range, 7 to 7.4 kilo newtons, your answer would be correct. If you want, you can also give the direction of the force by calculating the value theta, right? You can say that it is at theta degrees from 6000 newtons force. 
because force is a vector you can give the direction and the magnitude both. Let us come to the B part of the question. In this figure you are shown another elephant pushing horizontally against a vehicle with a force of 11 kilonewtons with a force of 11 kilonewtons at a distance 1.8 meters above the ground. So let us identify which forces they are talking about. That's the force applied by the elephant which is 1.8 meters above the ground. The point M is the center of mass. Where is the center of mass? M as you can see here is the center of mass. Calculate the moment about point A. Here you see point A of the force exerted by the elephant. So maybe the elephant is exerting a force. Maybe A is created like a pivot. The vehicle turns around. The vehicle is turning around point A. Right? So you have to calculate the moment about point A. So what is the formula for moment? Let us start with writing the formula. It is always a good idea, idea to start the start solving the question by writing the formula first. Moment is, I am sorry, let me rewrite this. Moment is force times distance. You have to find the moment of force exerted by the elephant. So what is the force exerted by the elephant? 11,000 newtons, it is kilonewtons take care of these small terms multiplied by its perpendicular distance from A 90 degrees the distance should be 90 degrees perpendicular distance which is 1.8 meters if you multiply these two numbers you will get your answer which should be approximately equal to 20,000 or 20 kilo Newton meter. So approximate answer would be somewhat in this range. Right? Or you can do the precise calculation, you will get your correct answer, precise answer. The mass of the vehicle is given to you. The mass of the vehicle is given to you and it does not slide when pushed by the elephant. Determine whether, whether the elephant tips the vehicle over, show your working. So the center of mass is given to you. Now they are giving you the details about the mass of the vehicle as well. Now the question what is being asked here in the third part is that the elephant is pushing on the vehicle. Will the, el will the vehicle, vehicle turn over topple and fall down or will it not fall down? So to this for this to answer, you have to calculate the moment about the turning point. Turning point is your A. A is like your pivot. A is like your pivot. Let us identify the clockwise moments created and the anti-clockwise moments created. When you look at this force here, it is creating a turning in this direction which is anti-clockwise. This is your anti-clockwise and the mass is creating a weight right which is creating a clockwise moment the push by the elephant is creating an anti-clockwise turning of the vehicle whereas the weight of the vehicle is creating a clockwise turning there are two moments there are two moments whichever moment will be bigger that ways the car or the vehicle will turn. You have already calculated the moment of the force by the elephant in this first part of P. B the first part you have already calculated the anti-clockwise moment. Anti-clockwise moment you have already calculated. A C W anti-clockwise moment is somewhere around 20 kilo Newton meter. What is the clockwise moment? It is due to the weight. Weight. Force times distance. This time the force is the weight times its distance. How much is the weight? 
1900 kg times its distance the distance perpendicular distance if you see perpendicular distance of the weight from the point p is 1.25 so how much is the anti clockwise moment when you calculate this number when you will calculate this number you see it will be somewhere approximately around 24 kilo newton meter so the clockwise moment you'll see will be bigger clockwise moment the clockwise moment will be greater than the anti clockwise moment as a result of which what can you conclude that the vehicle will not topple over it will not turn and fall on the other side conclusion is it will not the elephant will not tip the vehicle over it will not this should be your conclusion it is why i hope it is understood i am repeating it again because the clockwise moment which is created by the weight is larger if you see it is coming out to be a larger number it is larger you can do the precise calculations on your calculator the clockwise moment is larger so vehicle will tend to turn clockwise clockwise turning is a stable position because in that case the vehicle will be static on the ground it will be not moving it will not be tilting and it will not be tipping over on the other side all right i hope this question makes sense let us move on to question number 2 complete the following statement i am on question number 2 the a part an object is in equilibrium when both the this is something that we have done already in moments in the chapter equilibrium moment we have covered in three videos one of the video is on equilibrium go through it you'll understand an object is in equilibrium only when two conditions are fulfilled when the resultant force and the resultant moment on the objects are zero r is what resultant you may expand and write please in the examination write the full term when the resultant force and the resultant moment on the objects are zero so this is the theory thing which is already covered in moments moments video named what is equilibrium let us come to the b part the figure 3.1 shows a ladder ab the end a of the ladder rest against a vertical wall so this is a ladder ab is a ladder the end b rest on the rough ground the figure here shows two of the forces acting on the ladder they are showing two forces the only force on the ladder at a is f at a there is a force given to you which is f which acts at right angle to the wall and the weight of the ladder is 240 newtons this is your weight which is acting from the center point of the ladder right acting at the center of the mass of the ladder so this is your weight this is your other force which is coming through the wall calculate the moment of the weight of the ladder above the point p you have to find the moment of the weight so let us mark the force they are talking about 240 newtons above the point b they are talking about b which is we are considering as the pivot so what is the formula for moment force times the perpendicular distance force we know they are talking about the weight here so which is 240 weight is a force times its distance if you do not understand that weight is a force go through my video on mass and weight there you'll understand everything all the technical details about weight this will give you your answer so let's solve it 12 for the 48 for 12 to the so 28 newton meters that should be your answer 
288 Newton meters. All right. Let us come to this other part of the question, which they are calling as 2. Write an expression in terms of f, in terms of f for the moment of f about point b. Simple. They are considering b as the pivot force times the distance of b from the force perpendicular distance, which is given clearly. So what should it be? What should it be? force times the distance of the force. This is your f times 3.2. So the expression should be 3.2 f. You have to write in terms of f. So you have completed your answer. All right. Let us come to the next part of the question. Use your answer in one. This part to calculate the value of force. F. They are telling you to find the value of this force. Now you have to apply the principle of moment. Principle of moment is also we have covered in the theory. So what is happening? Is the ladder in equilibrium? Is it sliding down? No, it is not sliding down. It is perfectly resting well. It is stationary. So thinking about all the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments about point B. So they are taking the pivot as what is the pivot? Pivot is your point B. What are the clockwise moments? Clockwise moments are created by this force F. This force F is creating clockwise moment. What is the magnitude? F times 3.2. Anti-clockwise moment is created by your weight. What is the magnitude? 1.2 times 2, 4, 0. This is something that you already calculated here. That's why they are saying use your answer from 1 to calculate the value of F. Since the ladder is static, it is in equilibrium. For the ladder to be in equilibrium, the anti-clockwise moment should be equal to the clockwise moment. So what is the anti-clockwise moment? this one it should be equal to the clockwise moment which is this so when you solve this the value of f should be somewhere 90 meters all right explain why there must be an upward force acting on the ladder at point b so i'm going to erase and make some space here so that we can solve the last question now So they are saying, explain why there must be an upward force acting on the ladder at point B. They are saying why there must be an upward force like this acting at point B. Why? Why? Ask yourself, pause the video for a while. The answer lies hidden here. The ladder is in equilibrium, right? The object is in equilibrium when the resultant force and the resultant moment are zero. We use the concept of resultant moment to be zero to solve the upper question, this question, anti-clockwise and clockwise moment equal to zero. Right Now we are going to use the other concept that the resultant force should be zero. If the resultant force has to be zero, the downward force by the weight should be balanced by some upward force. Let us call it F upward. If you have a downward force, automatically it means to make the resultant force to be zero. Resultant force to be zero, there should be an upward force. So explain why there is an upward force present. Why? Because there is a downward force present or you can say you have to make the resultant force should be zero. Why is it possible? Only when you have an upward force an upward force which should be equal to the downward force of weight. Weight is Weight is how much? 240 
newtons. So there should be an upward force and its magnitude should, should be 240 newtons. Right, I hope I have clarified this question. Let us move on to the next question. Okay, so question number 3. So what is happening? Let us understand. A meter ruler balances when the 50 meter, 50 centimeter mark is directly above the pivot. So you have a meter ruler, something like this. Let me draw the ruler. It is balancing where on a 50, 50 centimeter mark. This mark here is 50 centimeter. This is your 50 centimeter mark. So that's how you are balancing it. Balancing means it is coming to a perfect horizontal position, not turning left or right. This is called balancing. So let us come to the first part. State where in the rule is the center of mass located. So where is the center of mass? You can easily say it is at sorry for this where is it it is at 50 centimeter mark easy and simple question first one done sorted let us come to the next part it shows an apple the figure shows an apple and a 0 0.4 newtons weight so the details are already written sometimes the details are already written so it saves you some effort are placed on the rule so that the rule remains balanced. Rule means ruler, it is balanced at 50 centimeter mark. Again, the distances are also printed on the picture. So easy and simple for us to see and understand. Very, very simple question. Looks like a very simple question. The center of the mass is at 25 centimeters from the pivot. The center of the mass of the weight is at 45 centimeters from the pivot. Calculate the weight of the apple. Let us calculate the weight of the apple. What do we apply? It's a two mark question. So please write your steps so that you do not lose marks here and there. So what is the weight? How do you find it? What is the first type that you write? Anti-clockwise moment. Anti-clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment. What is creating the anti-clockwise moment? Look at the picture. The apple is creating a turning effect which is in the anti-clockwise direction. So let us say that the weight of the apple is, let us say that the weight of the apple is W A. Weight of the apple. So WA times the distance of the apple which is 25 should be equal to 40 sorry the weight what is creating the clockwise momentum the weights are creating the clockwise momentum so what is the force force is the weight of the weights times its distance 45. So when you solve this you will find out that the weight of the apple comes out to be 0 0.72 newtons. So that's your answer. All the variables are given here except for the weight of the apple which is easy to find, right? You can solve this question simply. So what is the mass of the apple? I am now here at the top. What is the mass of the apple? If you have not gone through my video on mass and weight or if you are not clear on mass and weight, go through that video to understand this topic. The formula for the weight is mg, right? You have already found out the weight. So what is the mass? Weight times g. So how much is the weight? 0 0.72 and how much is the g value? 9.2. When you solve this question, your answer should be around 90 newtons. Sorry, it is 
it is the mass we are talking about that's how people make mistakes do not be in a hurry we are calculating mass the unit should be kg fine the apple i'm on part c now the apple is not moved but you are removing away the weights the weight is removed from the rule and the pivot is moved you are moving the pivot right if the pivot is moved to the left until the ruler balances again until the ruler balances again now there are no weights no weights you see anywhere the apple is balanced still balanced the ruler is balanced explain why the arrangement is balanced explain why the arrangement in this figure balances right why is there we can see that there is an anti-clockwise moment being created this is your anti-clockwise moment created due to what apple apple where is the pivot you know the pivot so is there any clockwise moment created clockwise moment created what is creating the clockwise moment try to think about it pause the video for a moment and think about it is there any force present which is creating a clockwise moment think 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 try to identify the force if you are not getting the hint go to the first part of the question you had located the center of mass center of mass is the point through which the weight of the ruler the weight of the ruler is acting down weight of the ruler wr means weight of the ruler right so why the arrangement balances because there is a anti there is a clockwise moment there is a clockwise moment created by the weight of the ruler which is not at the pivot anymore it has moved towards the right of the pivot the center of mass has moved to the right of the pivot earlier also the weight was acting through the pivot the weight was acting the weight of the ruler was acting through the pivot earlier also the weight of the ruler was acting through the center of mass earlier also but its moment was the moment created by the weight of the ruler was zero why because weight of the ruler multiplied by its distance from the root from the pivot was the distance from the pivot was zero so the moment which was created by the ruler in the earlier picture was zero moment created by the ruler was zero in the earlier scenario why because the center of mass and the pivot were precisely at the same location so the distance part in the formula became zero the weight was not creating any turning effect here the weight is away from the pivot the center of mass and the pivot are not the same point they are different points so here the weight is creating a turning effect in the earlier case the weight was precisely on top of the pivot so there was no turning effect the distance was becoming zero here the weight is away from the pivot the center of mass is away from the pivot so it is creating a turning effect so explain this question which is asking you to explain the arrangement why is it balanced it is a two mark question it is a two mark question so you need to give give some proper reasoning here right so what do you say what do you say that the moment due to apple is equal and opposite to the moment by the weight of ruler right this is point number 1 for which you get one mark the moment due to the apple is equal and opposite to the moment by the weight of the ruler 
second point that you will make will give you the second mark. Hence, the resultant, I do not have space, so I am just writing R, but in your answers, please write resultant as a full term. Resultant moment is equal to 0. Resultant moment equal to 0 means resultant turning effect is 0. Turning effect is 0 means it is not turning. Clear? Now the last question is easy to do. The pivot is closer to the 50 centimeter mark. The pivot here is closer to the 50 centimeter mark. The pivot is closer to the center of mass. Compare the weight of the ruler to the weight of the apple. So compare them. The force which is closer to the pivot is always bigger in size as compared to the force which is away from the pivot. Apple is away. The center of mass, the weight is acting from a nearer point to the pivot. So the weight of the ruler should be greater than the weight of the apple. Why? Why? Because the distance of the center of mass is less than the distance of the apple from the pivot. So this is your basic understanding of the principle of moments which will help you to find the last part of this question. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand how the questions on momentums are solved. They are very, very fun to solve, very easy to solve if you understand the theory quite well. Please do understand and practice more and more questions. In the next video, we'll be taking up three more questions, which will be question number four, five and six. Thank you so much.